I believe that the um, major problem of, of modern democracies is the lack of accountability. So if you are a politician, get elected for four years, then uh, and you didn't deliver on your promise, nobody will ever prosecute you, right? And, uh, and for this reason, in, in modern democracies, we tend to elect marketers and uh, advertisers rather than politicians. So these people are not problem solvers. Right. They're, they're, problem they're problem makers. They're problem makers. They're problem makers. Thank you for joining the Change I Am Possible, which is India's first future tech podcast. And today I'm delighted and honored to have with me Mr. Marcello Marie, who believes in and advocates the convergence of marketing with technology, creativity with sales, to create beautiful and compelling narratives to make brands stand out. He has built and managed teams of dedicated professionals with the aim to create an environment where everyone feels free to share ideas and comfortable testing the untested. He has a strong passion for exponential technology, especially blockchain, crypto and artificial intelligence. Marcelo is also a writer and contributor to publications such as The Wired, TechCrunch, The Guardian and many others. He is an expert speaker on marketing, blockchain and artificial intelligence and currently is the CEO of the Singularity DAO. So Marcelo, really appreciate you taking time and being part of a humble effort. So we're going to be talking about blockchain. Can you like kind of uh, demystify blockchain and explain what blockchain is and and uh, the surrounding layers of it also like blockchain decentralized finance uh, decentralized autonomous uh, organization and things like that so you know i mean can you start with that for sure for sure thank you so much eddie it's a great honor for me to be on your podcast thanks for inviting me and uh, really flattering introduction and uh, yes i uh, since since that bio i kind of evolved more i mean i'm my, now my main occupation is to lead a uh, singularity DAO, as you as you correctly say, in the position of of CEO, and I've been in crypto since 2017. Um, with actually a, a a fun story. So in uh, in uh, in 2017, I was as you correctly said, I was writing for TechCrunch, for Wired, for The Guardian, and for many other newspapers, and already did a TED talk back then, telling the story of of how I got to those publications. But that was my life before crypto. And while I was writing for one of these publications, I actually came across the topic of blockchain. And I tried to explain blockchain in, uh, in, uh, in simple words. And, and the best way to explain blockchain to me, to non-tech uh, people, is to imagine like a blockchain as a distributed ledger. So a ledger is, it, it, it could be on paper, right, when you sign or, or your transaction and you say like, you know, Eddie gave Marcello one dollar or whatever, Marcello, Eddie gave back. So if this ledger get lost, you know, I can say that I never gave you the dollar, basically. If this ledger is printed on, on several pieces of paper distributed at the four corners of Kiev, then it's more difficult for me to say that I didn't give you that dollar, right? And uh, if this ledger is distributed across thousands and thousands of computers across the world, then it becomes impossible for me to deny that the transaction happened. So this is what blockchain does. And uh, the beauty is that while right now, in order to, since, since we only have this existing ledger, right? And in order to say that I gave you $1, uh, there needs to be an entity between us that says, yes, Marcello gave $1, to Eddie and that dollar is worth one dollar, you know, that's, and this, this function is normally um, exercised by, by central banks. Uh, thanks to the blockchain and thanks to the net, to, to the uh, distributed nature of the blockchain, then that, that mid person uh, doesn't, doesn't, doesn't need to exist anymore. So um, obviously when, uh, when the first Bitcoin uh, white paper came out, the first logical use of, of blockchain was to disrupt the banking industry. And, and especially, I mean, it's, it's very likely that the collective that wrote the first white paper was, um, was coming from the United States, where we all know there is a general mistrust towards centralized institutions and, and their government themselves. So it was logical for them to think about blockchain as a way to disrupt banking system, but also democracy, right? So the two institutions that have the least faith in. But blockchain can be used for 
um, for many other purposes outside of, of finance and, and, and banking. It can be used to track supply chain management more efficiently. It can be used um, to, this, uh, to, this, to, to, to make more efficient decentralized decision making processes, um, and which, is, which then resulted on what you said earlier, which, which are the distributed autonomous organization, the DAOs, right? So um, organization that uh, are independent by, by their own nature and, uh, and the self-sustained. So imagine uh, the centralized autonomous organization can be um, um, a forest, for example, right? So a forest, a forest doesn't, that doesn't exist because of a centralized authority, mother nature that, that gives them the right to exist. A forest just exists because it's, a, because, because it's its nature to exist, right? A tree is just a tree. In the same way, the centralized autonomous organization self sustain itself and exist because of because it exists so the project that i'm involved right now and that i had the pleasure of being the ceo for is called singularity dao and dao stands for decentralized autonomous organization which is sort of counterproductive for myself because if if everything goes according to plan in in, in five years time i'm not going to have a job anymore <laughs> because the community will be able to decide independently right so um every decision of course is weighted against the participation that the community make in this in this project um so of course we have stakeholders with more with more power other with less powers um but yeah so i sorry i kind of diverged a little bit too much from your original question. So I'll, uh, I'll go back to you. Thank you for explaining uh, what blockchain and DAOs are. You know, yes, I guess, you know, you rightfully pointed out that there is a growing distrust of a centralized organization or governments because there's been so many promises. And I'll, I'll just give you a little example of my country. You know, I mean, we are a growing economy. We are among the second largest populated country in the world. But there is so much problem with, with, with the country and, and the, the way a centralized authority functions. It, it, it's more of promises rather than actual implementation. The government uses the, the media uh, as to create narratives and then these people buy narratives, but the narratives don't walk into actual implementation. Mm -hmm. So there is definitely a growing distrust with the government, the, the, the style of governance. There's a distrust with the banking industry because so far, I think the common man or, or the consumer has always been taken advantage of. But now I think... With these technologies, you know, whether it's blockchain, artificial intelligence, IoT, AR, VR, MR, and so, so, so many other, I, I think it, it will possibly give more power back to the, the consumer. And, and mm -hmm. that's that's what is exciting. So I'm before I, I mean, we get into the singularity DAO, your company and what you're building. I mean, I'm going to stick to blockchain DeFi, DAOs. So so we still we do not do not have a basic understanding because you know when you say there is tokens and coins you know there is a clear difference between it right but you know normally the, the world does not know so would you like to kind of start with there and give uh, differentiate between what is a token and what is a coin yeah no for sure so um first of all i mean you said something very interesting about about the current state of of democracies and and um and let me just step back a little bit because i i, I study politics right myself and i um and i and i agree a lot with what you said um the uh i believe that the um, major problem of of modern democracies is is the lack of accountability so if you are a politician get elected for 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 four years then uh, you know, if you if if you get out of power and the community vote and the, and um, the electorate vote for somebody else and you didn't deliver on your promise, nobody will ever persecute you, prosecute you, right? Um, and uh, and for this reason, in in modern democracies, we tend to elect marketers and ad, ad, advertisers rather than politicians. So these people are not problem solvers; right. they're, the they're problem makers because they're only their only reason to exist right. is because there are problems that they want to solve. So they always pointed out a different problem or the immigration or the global crisis or uh, globalization or something. I don't know what the main problem in India is, but this is currently in 
in, in Europe. And it's because these people don't have skin in the game. Me as a CEO, I, I get a salary, yes, but the majority of my holding is, comes from my skin in the game. So if the, project, if the project doesn't succeed, I don't get paid, basically. And, and so it goes with the DAO. If people that with skin in the game don't make decisions that are beneficial for the whole DAO, they don't be the benefit themselves, right? So it's not like in, in, in a regular democracy where one vote is worth one vote. And even if, if my decision has no impact, then, then I, you know, my, my life wouldn't be an impact. In, 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 in DAOs, your skin in the game is, is fundamental. So, um, so that's, that's, that's the true differences. In, um, in uh, going back to your question, and sorry for diverging, but I find it very interesting to talk to you. Um, in, uh, in, 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 in blockchain, so yes, one thing is, is blockchain, right, which is a distributed ledger that, that, I, that I mentioned before. One of the applications are cryptocurrencies, right? And, and, um, and cryptocurrencies, they have different, different functions and different utilities, right? So um, you have our tokens, for example, is used to govern the, our DAO. So the more, the more SDAO token you have, the more voting power you have within the DAO. Um, the AGI X uh, token is used for using the decentralized AI platform. So that means that you need that token in order to purchase some services. And different companies have different different models. But it's important to make the distinction between blockchain, which is the underlying technology, and cryptos, uh, which are one of the applications of of blockchain. And I believe that most 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 time than not, people tend to confuse crypto with blockchain. And I think it's an important definition to make. Right. So so you mentioned about governance and, and you also earlier mentioned that uh, blockchain could disrupt the, the banking industry. The media tries to divide us rather than unite us. You know, and, and there is so much one can do if we access the collective intelligence Talking about the disrupting the banking industry now, that's like challenging the 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 status quo because you know almost all the organizations through history have have a, a way of functioning and they've worked very in in a traditional format. Whether it's the government, it's the banking industry, and through history, the ones who challenge these uh, the, the the banking industries have not gone down so well i mean you know it's, it's because these guys hold the power of capital yeah. they control they have the power they control the money they control the media and, and therefore the, uh, the the narrative what, what goes out when it comes to blockchain or cryptocurrency 90 percent of the narrative that goes out in media is that how cryptocurrency is volatile, how there are ICO scams going on on a regular basis, how blockchain is used for money laundering, illegal criminal activities leveraging blockchain on the dark web. So two questions. How have traditional companies, banks and governments reacted to technology that can bring transparency and possibly, possibly completely upend or disrupt those businesses? How do how are they reacting? And is blockchain all negative or, you know, do share your perspective on how this technology or tool can create transformation? Yeah, yeah, very interesting. Um, okay, so, I mean, obviously, the banking system have challenged the blockchain ecosystem for ext extensively for the last uh, for the last few years but uh, they so they, they they challenged it mostly by making public statements right so um and as you said by by trying to push the narrative that blockchain and crypto are associated with money laundering with illegal drug trafficking and whatnot um so they did try that um i believe they failed because I don't think that the general perception of blockchain and crypto is that way. I mean, you get people that think that Bitcoin are only used for drugs 
Um, but, uh, but it seems that the narrative failed to, to, um, to pass. What they did to challenge that, they tried to make blockchain theirs, right? So there has been multiple attempt, attempt by banks to make their own blockchain, um, private, um, cross, um, cross blockchains or, or, or parachains, um, but none of them have actually succeed. They haven't succeed because there is that lack of um, community perception in traditional world that actually exists in, uh, in blockchain. So in blockchain, we're all aligned and we, know, we all know what, what is the greatest mission, the greater mission of, of, of us being in this ecosystem, which is achieved through decentralization and through decision make, decentralized decision-making processes. And this doesn't really happen in, uh, in, uh, in the banking world. So um, definitely all that you said, so illegal, um, um, Ill illegal stuff correlated to, to Bitcoin, uh, price manipulation, um, illegal d d drug smuggling and uh, um, wash trading. Those are all activities that are largely associated with the US dollar. So <laughs> it's, not, it's not because Bitcoin is Bitcoin and Bitcoin is on the blockchain. I mean, that's what people do with money, unfortunately. And uh, um, I'm not suggesting that Bitcoin is necessarily money, but it has a value attached. So um, I don't see the, the, the current banking system and the current fiat uh, monetary system being more efficient than the crypto, the crypto um ecosystem right so i that's that's what i normally push back uh, when 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 people made makes this these allegations right so so you know i mean post covid i think everybody has realized that digitization or adopting of these emerging tech it is the most essential thing for a business to survive and thrive going forward and blockchain, like rightfully mentioned, almost all, all of the banks are trying to kind of understand it. Now, I see that the, the trend right now with even governments are trying to adopt it, but the governments and banking industry are trying to leverage blockchain, but they are decoupling it from the underlying technology of blockchain, the, 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 the decentralization they're trying to, uh, yeah. you know, that immutability they're trying to take out. Is that a practical approach of leveraging this technology, which could be transformational? I think, you know, the best trait of, of blockchain technology is to foster the centralized decentralization, the centralized um, decision making processes, as I said. So um, all that you know, centralized institutions are doing is, is basically turning the same old stuff, I mean, using new technology to do the same old business, right? And that is doomed to fail. Um, if they don't understand the true nature of, of, of decentralization and community, decentralized community, I think they will fail to understand blockchain. And it's very important, for example, for, for us building um, decentralized companies um, to understand the value of open source decentralized communities, um, which are formed all over the place is incredible, right? So you got Telegram chats, you got Discord chats, you got 4chan, Reddit, Twitter, and all of these, you know, um, 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 all of these places, they turn into public agoras, you know, like, like they used to do in ancient, in ancient Greece, where people come in and they just discuss uh, new topics and they discuss the future of the company and they express their opinion. And, and doing so, they influence the companies on, on, on their own. And I think this is a fantastic power that our community have. Imagine, imagine if, if, if all the clients of, I don't know, HSBC, for example, they gather in 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 uh, in Times Square in New York or or on uh, in uh, Wakul Island in, uh, in in Hong Kong to protest against HSBC practice, do you think HSBC would would give a damn? They don't. They don't care. They're just too large. I mean, they they don't have to listen to to their to their communities, right? Well, in blockchain, we we do that a lot, and uh, we we encourage participation and we encourage. Um, 
yeah so ideas sharing so i think i think it's a completely different paradigms compared to the traditional centralized world it, the, 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 you know when when you're an entrepreneur and you believe in capitalism i guess the the, the way you function is, is limits you because you you have a certain belief of building businesses and, and creating value blockchain i think like you rightfully mentioned it's a new paradigm of creating wealth for everyone and creating a decentralized uh the, so so oh, yeah uh, singularity dao would you like to nah, talk about <laughs> yeah, singularity dao and how <laughs> it's uh, yeah yeah the conversation was pretty interesting anyway thank you very much um <laughs> Yeah so um with with singularity dao our mission is to make and, and probably your listener might have heard this a lot but I'm going to explain why why this is different but our mission is to make the crypto economy really accessible by everybody right so um we have we are we are building a platform where anybody can just come in and uh, and uh, and use their existing funding and take advantage of our trading strategies in order to maximize their profits okay so it's very important that to understand that we are non custodians so we don't ask people to give us their money and then we will invest their money like a bank would do right no you anybody they keep they keep the money and they just use our artificial intelligence to make this to put this money to profit so the artificial intelligence bit is the most important because so we we are ingrained within singularity net so singularity net is the mothership company where singularity dao is part of singularity net is one of the most advanced um artificial intelligence projects in the world we have the goal of building artificial general intelligence therefore um a machine that can actually think like a human brain so we are using we as singularity dao are using the artificial intelligence that comes from singularity net to make educated decision about portfolio management for the, for our community right so our artificial intelligence in the future would be able to accurately predict the fluctuation of crypto prices and will be able to understand what the sentiment is around certain cryptocurrencies and all of this data elaborated will help managing portfolios for our users so what the user needs to worry is basically nothing so they just come in they participate to our ecosystem and don't have to worry about anything else they 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 have more opportunity to stake and farm new tokens but if they don't want they can just uh, stay there and and enjoy the alpha produced by our artificial intelligence but i what i what i'm trying to explain is that it is not just a decentralized finance solution it is not just an investment solution that we are building but we are a brick into forming something much greater which is the next superhuman level artificial intelligence which is likely to be the last invention that the human kind will have to make because once we invent superhuman artificial intelligence we have no other problems right the 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 the, the agi would work for us would solve covid for us would find um cure for for pandemic we we will have just to enjoy our life so you know this is so powerful and so transformational and so pivotal in the moment of history i mean it's going to be far more important than the invention of of writing for example and and it's so important that we get it right that we want to encourage as many people as possible to participate to this ecosystem and this is the chance that we have right now this is the chance that our generation holds this is the chance that 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 we have in this specific period of time and we're not going to have it again in the future so this is critical that people participate to this decision making processes and they can do so by joining singularity net communities online by making their voice heard by joining singularity dao by sharing their ideas and we have so many opportunities for people to participate we even give grant to whomever has the best ideas to use artificial intelligence for so we really want to make this as much part- 
participative uh, as possible and, and democratic. So I invite everybody to come to singularitynet.io um, to join our communities on this, on, uh, on Telegram, on Twitter, our forum, and, uh, and yeah, participate, please. Lovely. I, I, I think we are in a cusp of a fantastic time almost all of the technologies are converging and i guess that's the reason you are leveraging blockchain you're leveraging ai with blockchain and, and your your sister concern you said singularity uh, network is obviously building artificial general intelligence with dr ben gertzel helming the project you know and and yes i mean uh, though I, I remain optimistic of agi but yes the, everything is got got its pros and cons and if, eventually if we do get to human level intelligence with, with, on the machines the world obviously will look fantastic because everything is going to be transformed but ev- I, I, I think every good thing uh, like everything has got an opposite reaction <laughs> so so i do believe that with the good things there would be uh the opposite uh, of it also which we we don't really know of and i guess may- maybe we need to collectively think about like what could be the things that could possibly go wrong if we ever get to agi i'm, I'm going to stick to a, a, a singularity dao at this point in time or oh, would you talk a little bit more about that because at this point in time it's not available here in india uh, uh, AGI X, I think, is, but uh, SDAO is not. Uh, is, is there any plans to tie up with some exchanges over here? And uh, what makes uh, Singularity DAO unique? I mean, uh, do share its utility and why the AI layer? What does the AI do? Could you talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So, um, first of all, we are a utility token and not a security, right? So, um, it's uh, so see, the the S DAO token, which is the token that uh, rules Singularity DAO, is not a financial instrument and uh, and it's not an investment in, this, in, in um, instrument, right? So um, people can find it and can trade it independently, but this is not something that we that we support. Um, currently, the uh, the token is traded on uh, on Uniswap which is a decentralized exchange, which I believe is also available in India and has been picked up by a centralized exchange. Um, I believe it's a, a, a Chinese one called gate.io. Um, so if somebody wants to trade them, they trade the token, they can find them on those exchanges, but this is something that we don't actually engage with or, or support. Um, in terms of Singularity DAO. So the S DAO token is necessary for Singularity DAO because that's what people will use when it comes to vote for um, the critical decisions within within our DAO. So in order to achieve this through decentralization, we gave plenty of opportunities to people to get the token for free. We got airdrops, right, where we gave away five percent of a whole token supply of our DAO to the users um we we gave the agi holder community the 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 opportunity to finance the project independently without having to go through venture capital um so uh, a a community funded project so we our goal is to widespread the governance as much as possible and to get as many token holders as possible because we want people to participate that's that's the whole point. They, right. We want them to to work with us on shaping the future of humanity by building artificial general general intelligence. So the layer in the AI layer in in, in singularity now it's it's the core of of the platform, right? So thanks to our AI, we'll be able to analyze a ginormous amount of data coming from a number of, of, of different sources, which is something that a human trader would never be able to do, right? So uh, while the human component would always be fundamental for the limitations of, of our brain, which is, you know, in, boxed between this, this skull, we cannot grow more than this, right? Maybe in many hundreds of years, we cannot analyze too many data. The, an AI can analyze as many data as the computing power can can support, which is now now a lot. So um, 
because of because of this artificial intelligence will be able to make better trades and to manage our community members uh, funding more efficiently than a human trader would do. So we really believe that's the true innovation that we're bringing to the market. Wish you the very best for it. You know? So at this point in time, you know, there is China who has banned Bitcoin uh, mining. There is India and other nations having a cautious approach to uh, blockchain and Bitcoin versus there are other nations who are adopting it. Then there is El Salvador, I think, who has embraced Bitcoin. So how are these dynamics you see who is going to impact the the blockchain community? Yeah, I mean, they, they, they had they had a big impact, right? And almost all the time that one of these announcements have been made, that the uh, uh, a price action has corresponded on on um, on uh, on Bitcoin, for example. However, um, the narrative that China has banned Bitcoin mining has been misinterpreted in the sense that China has shut down some mining facilities that were evading taxes, but that didn't ban they didn't ban Bitcoin mining uh, per se. Uh, they just banned all those that you know were doing it illegally. Um, I'm very much in favor of countries adopting Bitcoin as a legal tender and official currency. Of course, San Salvador is just a very small step um, towards achieving mass adoption of cryptocurrencies um, across the globe. Um, but it's it's definitely a beginning. I mean, it's uh, it's 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 way to go. And there are countries where that would be much better off by using cryptocurrencies as as main currency rather than their own centralized currency. And I'm thinking of those countries like um, Zimbabwe uh, with with gigantic fluctuation, or or Argentina or Venezuela, right? When similar attempts have been, have been done, very. Um, in a very goofy way, I would say. Um, but yeah, so the, the you know these things go in the right direction. I'm just waiting for the day in which United States will adopt Bitcoin as a main currency. <laughs> but did you see that happening in the near future? No, nah, no, nah, very unlikely. Very <laughs> unlikely. Uh, I, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, the the you know, the, the USD is is the only asset that. United States, it's the most valuable assets that United States still have, right? So they, uh, they, they, they wouldn't get rid of it. And uh, but other countries, yes, why not? Right. So yeah, the, the problem with crypto, I believe, is you know, unlike your fiat uh, or digital currency, I mean, we trade or it, it, we, we transact it on a daily basis. With crypto, the problem is that it's either you're holding it or you're trading it. You know, so that that I believe I think it, it thing is is a major problem. Now, do you see artificial intelligence, blockchain, and other tech, uh, exponential technologies creating a fair, just, and more equitable society? Um, it's an element. It's definitely an element. Yes, I mean I'm not saying that cryptocurrencies will solve all the problems of our society, um, but definitely giving people the power of mining their own currency. Um, having a deflectionary um, supply system, I think, I think this goes into the direction of generating distributed wealth, right? So clearly, the current banking system has failed. Um, have um, have um, have widespread the gap between rich and poor, and 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 it hasn't been effective. And you're totally right. Currently, Bitcoin, in most cases, either you hold it or you trade it. There are ways to to spend Bitcoin and. I mean, I'm using some of them. There are companies that are currently creating um, decentralized payment solution and they will allow um, to use crypto for, 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 for banking, almost like a traditional banking systems. And, uh, and those would be critical in, um, in fostering and growing adoption. Right, right. So I've been vested in virtual ID since 2015. And then I'm seeing this, we've obviously been building these virtual worlds, you know, there's Facebook that's built Horizon, which is a virtual world, there's NVIDIA, which is uh, built Omniverse, which is a digital earth scale world, you know, people are building these spatial web and web 2.0. And there's a layer of economy, which has been built on it, you know, leveraging what they're doing is that they, 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 
they're selling digital locations, digital assets, and then there's NFTs, you know, and recently, I mean, I saw your tweet that one of your NFT, which was created by Sophia, sold for $12 million. So would you like to talk a little bit more about that? At this point in time, it seems just like a bubble which is about to burst. But do you think uh, NFT is, is here to stay? Um, yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, and I will tell you more. I believe that decentralized finance and NFT are the two real um, killer applications for blockchain. So um, decentralized finance, we spoke already why. Um, NFTs, I mean, as a, as a, as a mean to certify um, digital IP, I think is here to stay. And, and uh, yes, it's been used in, in the art world and uh, it boomed so fast that uh, it couldn't last very long and, if, and effectively the, the bubble almost burst right right i mean right away it was it was very quick but i think it will come back as a trend and i can think of many more applications of of non-fungible tokens in uh, in uh, in our society so yeah i think especially for the creative industry right so digital art was there before but unfortunately it was impossible for digital artists to monetize their arts and now they finally can so i don't see how this can uh, can can be a bubble we might not see like the gigantic 65 millions was it paid for uh, 69 people? 69 yeah 69 million. exactly so we might i was an indian investor by the way right I mean, right oh, no, bought it, yeah right. and um i don't uh, i don't i don't think we might see these numbers again we might but i don't believe so but generally nft as a piece of technology will 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 absolutely stay there yes and uh, and yeah i had this um, amazing experience of being one of the first uh, three humans ever portrayed by uh, humanoid artificial intelligence and my portrait was sold on uh, on the secondary market it was was sold on the primary market and now it's on sale on the secondary market for 12 millions of dollars which is out of control right i mean no one would ever buy it for 12 million dollars but it's just a fun story to tell and uh, and a nice experience to be part of the original artwork was sold for 1.4 uh, millions of dollars so not bad but different from 12 millions the world currently functions in a very centralized way you know a and change comes difficult you know we, we we do not change easily do you see blockchain crypto going mainstream a and what is the roadmap for singularity net and singularity DAO? so the future looks extremely bright. So Singularity Net, uh, as so as the blockchain ecosystem matures, there are more uh, efficient, scalable um, solutions than the Ethereum blockchain, where most of most of crypto companies are based upon. So Singularity Net is moving to to Cardano, uh, which is a new blockchain, which is a very, um, which is extremely efficient and. Uh, and and fast and scalable and it's a great piece of uh, technology right um and as we move we're gonna launch a number of initiatives we're gonna um we're gonna launch the grant project that we call deep funding pool for the community to come in and get their um and uh, and get their ideas over so the best ideas will be financed by the singularity dao foundation singularity net foundation and uh, as singularity net is evolving to become um, um, almost like an umbrella for different projects to spin off. Um, we are looking forward to launch uh, NewNet, which is a company that centralized computing resources. So imagine being able to give, uh, to make your the resources on your phone available and get tokens for that. Um, or Rejuve, which is a company targeting longevity medical research. So imagine getting token to contribute with your biomedic data securely stored on the blockchain to contribute to foster, to foster anti-aging research so that we don't have to die anymore in the future. Then Accelerando, the centralized reputation mechanism. Um, Sophia Dao that you mentioned earlier, the centralized um, the robotic mind and metaverses and NFT. There's so much that Singularity Net is doing. And then of course, Singularity Dao. Singularity Dao will evolve to become a full suit of the centralized finance tools and solution for the community to use will become 
a DAO, a true decentralized autonomous organization with the community able to vote on different proposals and make active decisions within the ecosystem, we launch our own launchpad, which will be a core spinning agents for all the Singularity Net projects. We are launching a governance portal. So there's so much going on. We are becoming multi-chain ourselves. We're probably going to be launching on Polygon, um, Binance Smart Chain, Cardano, and so on. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to keep us busy. Lovely, lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Marcelo, for be, taking time and being part of the podcast and sharing your insights on blockchain, decentralized finance, DAOs, and wish you the very best for whatever you're doing. You're doing so many things. And I guess uh, the, 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 you, you're laying the building blocks and once it all kind of weaves in together, it'll really shape into something which will truly transform the world. So far, the world has seen incremental changes because that's the way it functions. You know, I mean, this tool these technologies that we have and, and uh, you know it has given us a chance to correct the wrongs and, and there's so many wrongs and if we all correct it and have a mindset that these tools and technologies can be used for a larger benefit then the world itself will really look good so we need more such brave entrepreneurs such as yourself so wish you the very best and thank you for being part of the podcast and to my listeners if you like what you see in here then please press the subscribe button until next time see you guys bye bye thank you thank you thank you very much it was a pleasure to be on your podcast thank you so much